for that for that long. And uh, over to you for the update. Thank you. I lost a bit. That's why. Uh, nice T-shirt, Malcolm. Uh, cool to see how quickly that can change. Oh, I need a bigger. Okay, it works. Thank you, Nichelle, for taking up so much time. I'm, I'm just worried because I know that at the end of this presentation, there's also a couple of RPKI slides, so I might just quickly. In Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban, you can see the, uh, the peak traffic that's happening over there. Uh, the cool thing is that we are now at 420 unique ASNs across all of our exchanges. Um, and we have done a rough calculation and adding about 50 new ASNs every year. Uh, we are also privileged to say that uh, we are seeing ASs from at least 26 African countries as well, which is why we do this in the first place. Uh, port sizes, we're starting at 10 gig. We no longer support copper and we pretend that we don't support one gig fiber. 1,000 in excess of 1,000 active ports, 10.2 terabits of connected capacity. Uh, we also are doing root origin validation on our root servers. Uh, and recently we are Manners certified. It's all boring uh, up until the right. Uh, we do that slide every year every, or everywhere that we do a NAB Africa update. And it's interesting for us to see the changes that happen uh, and how quickly they happen over time. But we thought that today we'd speak about um, a new sort of team motto that we've adopted, and that is transparency. Um, and we see this as important to running an internet exchange. Uh, when we started back in, I think it was 2012, uh, we sat down, it was just Michelle and myself back then, and we had a discussion about what was going to be the most important thing about running an internet exchange. You know, because the tech is pretty easy um, and it's easy to find people to do it for you. So uh, what we came up at that stage was that the most important thing for an internet exchange is community. Um, and we've been saying that, uh, you know, over and over, over the years. And some of you um, engage with us way too much, but, uh, you know, others, we, we, we want the community to be a bit more involved. And we thought that part of doing, or, or part of uh, sort of uh, getting that to the fore is, is this concept of transparency. Um, we want, as it says, that we want all of our peering members to see what we can see. So uh, if you're following the mailing list, you will see that we've uh, launched a couple of services over the last... I guess over the last year. Um, the look, looking glass uh, is pretty standard. We're running it on bird's eye. You can get that at our IXP manager. Uh, we're busy with the integration into the, into the root collectors. We have a live weather map. Um, this is not just a marketing thing. Uh, we are we're putting up the data that we can see to make sure that everybody else can see. So if you go and have a look at our weather map, napafrica.net forward slash technical, you will see actual live data, live traffic across the internet exchange in Johannesburg for now. Um, and that'll show you the utilization across the entire network. And so often we get, uh, we get phone calls where people are asking about, you know, whether there's congestion somewhere on the network or whether there is a problem or packet loss or anything to that. And so we put the data out um, on, you know, on a public website so that everybody can see exactly what is happening. We're changing that over time to, to uh, add in additional information. So our, our fabric, if you want to see the CPU usage or the memory usage or packets dropped and that sort of thing, it, it's going to be all available for you in a live fashion. Uh, Syslog data as well. We, we are looking at a way of making some of that data available. Um, you know, we, we, we have a lot of support calls uh, where people are asking us, you know, we, we get a lot of calls every week about why has my port dropped. Um, so we, we are trying to make all of that information available so that um, the community can see what we need to. 
Uh, then in line with transparency, we did have an incident in 2018. I'm sure a lot of you know about it. Uh, that was due to human error. It uh, was an outage for about nine minutes on the 30th of July. I am the human and I am the error. Um, uh, and and I've not been able, to, well, I've not been allowed to forget about it. So. Yeah, so anyway, to, to prevent this in future, we are um, we're currently trialing a bunch of uh, automated provisioning systems. Um, and so we're going to be investing in that to, uh, I guess, to protect the, uh, the, the security of, of, of the exchange. And we expect this to be, to be ready before the end of, uh, before the end of the year. Okay. And then uh, we have, last year we started what was called the NAP Africa Roundtable. Um, and again, along with uh, community and transparency, we sat down with a number of our peers and um, had a discussion about what we should be doing, what we've done wrong, and what, what we can do better. Uh, in 2018, this was up in Cape Town, I think. Um, so these are, these are the ideas that came out of that session. So training opportunities, uh, we, subsequent to this, we started what is referred to as the Terraco Tech Days. Uh, we called it the Terraco Tech Days because we wanted to reach more than just, you know, people that work in the network space. Uh, we, we're dealing with a lot of uh, enterprise networks as well. So we have had quite a few of these sessions um, in partnership with a number of our clients and vendors, and it's been uh, extremely successful. Uh, one of the other things that came out was wiki pages for required information and links to content providers or examples of, of peering templates uh, that has been done. We have also, in partnership with a bunch of other networks, started what is referred to as the peering toolbox, uh, which is something that is actively in development. And the idea there is basically uh, to give as much information and best practice information to people who are just joining the peering world uh, so far. Um, then RPKI, obviously we have done that. Um, we'll get to that slide later, quickly. The welcome pack, we sort of put that under the peering toolbox. Um, peering DB, we have, I mean, it's just after this, we kicked off a project to make sure that uh, as many as possible of our members are registered on peering DB. Uh, I know that Mark and Yolandi have spent a lot of time uh, on that. If you haven't done it yet, we don't mandate it, we just strongly yeah. suggest it. Okay, and then um, we've opened up our IXP manager as well, or at least encouraged people to start using IXP manager. I'll show you how we, how we make use of IXP manager. Okay, some photographs of the Terraco Tech Days. I mean, again, the idea here is community. We believe that uh, a strong market is good for everybody. Um, and we've certainly seen that uh, after a lot of this training, uh, the um, the load on our support team has reduced. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can actually read this because I know that I can't see it on the screen in front of me. Uh, but this is basically how we use information. So there's always uh, a lot of concern about what we can see. I, you know, I see a couple of Facebook groups come up uh, with significant concern about internet exchange points and the amount of data that they have access to. So in keeping with you seeing what we can see, uh, the circle in the middle, I don't know, can you guys actually read anything on that slide? Not at all. Okay, so the big circle in the middle with all of the lines in, that's our IXP manager. So all of you have or should have access to, to our IXP manager. Um, from the switches side, we export uh, SFlow to IXP Manager and also to a tool called SFlow RT. In SFlow RT, we've written an application to uh, export data into Influx. And um, the important bit here is, is that we do uh, individual databases for every single ASN that is peering at the exchange. Right? That uh, access to that Influx uh, DB is available to all of the peers at so what it means is that well, we we started off with Grafana to build to build nice pretty dash dashboards, um, you know, for for the basic stats. But if you you can plug in any visualization tool that you are familiar with or that you are already using, as long as it has an influx, 
And that'll give you the ability to take all of the data that we have and build your own dashboards based on the traffic that is obviously relevant to, to you. Okay, and then based on that, uh, as you said, well, as I said previously, website has been updated. We are looking to change all of our graphing to use something more modern. Um, there's the, the weather map, again, mapafrica.net forward slash technical. It's updated every three seconds and I'll show you the actual utilization uh, per port and per switch. And as I said, we're adding on uh, a number of, more, a lot more sensor data onto each of the, each of the different components. MemberList is live on our website. Uh, it is live on the IXPDB and you can get it from IXP Manager as well. Oh, and importantly, we, we, we're also showing uh, the uh, manage status on, on all of these places. Again, uh, we encourage everybody to make use of the IXP Manager. Um, uh, one, obvious, one of the obvious benefits is to show you uh, who you are not peering with yet. Okay, so we built up the, the, the BGP peering matrix. Um, once you log in, you can see who you're not peering with or who your potential peers are, and uh, you can actually generate a peering request from inside the, uh, from inside the tool. Looking Glass is live as well uh, on, on IXP Manager. As I said, this is uh, pretty, pretty uh, standard using bird's eye. Um, again, that will show you what what you're advertising to uh, to the route servers, tell you what's been dropped, um, show you the status of all the features, you know, whether they are valid, invalid, that sort of thing. So make use of it. Uh, then manners, which is the uh, ISOC's mutually agreed norms for routing, routing security. Um, NAP Africa is a well, is now manners certified as of last week, I think. So from an exchange point, basically what this means is that we have to follow a number of steps to uh, enhance the security of, of the exchange. Um, so this goes down to, to the layer two level. You know, do we do filtering? Do we um, do port security? Uh, that sort of thing up to the, to the route server level. Um, and we encourage uh, all of the networks to, to have a look at and, uh, and to go through that process as well. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, and then RPKI. Uh, we, as I said, we have started doing route origin validation on our root servers. Uh, we've also made all of our validators available to anybody that's connected to, to any of the exchanges. So there are the DNS names, um, and you can use those today to, to do your own uh, validation. There is a long list of the filtering that we do go through. Uh, on the route servers. And there on your right hand side is just an example of the looking glass. Again, I can't really see it, but uh, that is an RPKI value. Um, unfortunately, this is according to NIST, uh, just a brief comparison between RIPE NCC and Acronym of uh, number of rows in the Acronym region. Doesn't, doesn't look great. So, uh, Anybody who is thinking about it or wants more information about uh, signing with you, it's, there's probably about 100 people that could be able to help with it. Uh, and this is, again, uh, as you can see there, out of the 26, what, 27,500 uh, origin pairs, only just over 1,000 are valid. So we still have a long way to go. And then, of course, the cloud. This is a internet conference, so we can't go without speaking about the cloud. Um, cloud on our implications, obviously, Johannesburg and Cape Town. Uh, we have seen, uh, as, as, as much as some of the people in the room don't like to speak about these things, uh, we have seen significant uptake of, of, uh, of these, these cloud circuits. Um, and it has been keeping us quite busy at the same time. These are the ways that you can connect to the various cloud providers, uh, whether it's physical or, very, or whether it's via the Terraco Cloud Exchange uh, is dependent on your own requirements and also those of the cloud provider. And that is that. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Randy. Hi, Randy. Randy Bush again. Sorry. On your RPKI, I don't want my picture taken. On your RPKI uh, origin validation slide, one of the lines said too short AS path length. Huh? Drop prefix where the AS path length is too short. Yes. Being short myself, <laughs> I have qualms about that. So uh, the, the actual rule in the filters is um, that the AS path has to be going to be greater than or equal to one. Oh, so this has nothing to do with RPKI at all. No, well, <laughs> this is the, um, these are all of the filters that happen on our, on Thank our you. service. Yeah, they're not specifically for RPKI. RPKI is down there at the bottom. Ben, welcome, Ryan. Um, the last line there, does that mean that RPKI valids skip the IRR filters? Yes. We don't All see- together? Yes. We don't see any value in, in doing a double check if it, uh, because remember that in, your RPK is going to give you effectively the same information. It's going to give you half the information. When you can guess how you're constructing the filter, you're confusing. Picking the, the root object with a origin AS, and that that origin AS is included in that peer's AS set. Yeah. Um, you only get the first bit of that information from RPK today. That may change down the line, but you don't. Are you still checking that the origin AS is included in the correct AS set? Yeah. Um, well, we're filtering on origin. So what are you saying? If you, are you saying that uh, the origin would be different? So if I inadvertently leak a prefix for yes. a customer, for, for, sorry, for someone who's not a customer, yeah but that happens to have a covering rower and it's valid. If you then the fact, it, yes, you if I have, leaked it, and they're not, that, the that, that origin AS is not in my AS set, yeah? The fact that it's valid would skip the AS set inclusion, no? Okay, well, unless I'm missing something. So you're suggesting that uh, the path validation should, the IRR path validation should come before the RPK? Uh, I would run them, so we run them as ships in the night. They, the one doesn't provide any exemptions for the other. Um, the plan, which is kind of what I think you're, you're driving up, driving at, probably over the next six months or so, is to start incorporating rowers as if they were root objects into the data that we build those prefixes from. Um, but at the moment, they're two entirely separate checks. Um, and the path yeah, validation so properties of AS set inclusion are not strong, but I think they're better than nothing. Yeah. Um, we, we did that for a while. Um, so the, the, the path validation using IRR. Um, interesting thing about IRR is we had an incident where one of our members was able to add a bunch of huge content providers AS sets um, into their AS sets. And it, it broke the entire process, uh, you know, of course, because they were suddenly seen as, as valid according to IRR. Um, and, and the path was valid as well. So I, I, I see that it is, it is an additional step um, on the value and how much value it actually adds. Yeah, I mean, the problem that you're describing would be, you know, kind of semantically by not checking if it's valid, you're saying that that peer's AS set can effectively include anything as a member. So you have the same problem either way. Yeah. Any more questions? None. Thank you, Andy. Thanks. Um, I think what I'd like to do now quickly is the MC.